bears are vicious killers, with the exception of pooh bears. Those fat little things never hurt anyone, and they're easy to hunt. I was watching a video the other day that had a guy making dovetails by hand in four minutes. Listen, I can't make four minute rice in under 20 minutes. There's no way I'm going to make fast hand cut dovetails like that. But still, there is something about a carefully crafted, painstaking mistakenly repaired hand cut dovetail. It just makes you feel good. So for those of you that are intimidated like I used to be at hand cutting dovetails, here are some tips that I picked up from woodworkers that are a lot smarter than I am and that really works out well for me. Layout is pretty fast and easy with the set of dividers. First, mark your half pins on both sides of the board. Then, set your dividers for what you think the width of the tail plus the width of a pin will be walk it across. The distance between the point of the dividers and that half pin mark on the other side of the board, that's going to be the width of your pin all the way across. If you like it, great. Go back and do it again, except this time poke the dividers in and make a little indentation. Do it starting from both sides. Then you can use those indentations along with a square, a dovetail gauge, and a sharp pencil to lay out your lines. I have to admit, I go back and forth on which marking gauge to use. I really like traditional tools, but the more modern designs of the marking gauges really are nice. The problem with a traditional marking gauge is that little pin. It's worked for centuries, but not as well as the wheel on the more modern gauges. That's because the wheel tends to pull the gauge towards the material, giving you a nice tight mark and it doesn't seem to catch as much in the grain of the wood especially on the ends where instead of dragging it you can roll it across you really should try one of these out if you haven't already i think it might just replace the traditional marking gauge in my tool set throughout history there have been some epic feuds the capulets and the montagues the Hatfields and McCoys, the Tailsies and the Pinsies. I gotta tell you, there's arguments for both sides. Pins first works, and Tails first works, but for much different reasons. One thing the Pinsies have on their sides is ease of marking. If you're doing fine pins and you cut the Tails first, transferring that to the other board can be pretty hard because you gotta put your pencil or your marking knife in a tight spot. Pins first gives you a lot more room when it comes time to transfer those marks. Another advantage of doing the pins first is then you can cut the tails on the bandsaw. Tails can be cut easily on the bandsaw without using any special jig. Bandsaw cut tails can be really fast because you can nibble out most of the waste with the blade and then use a chisel just for the finest cleanup. It can really speed up your dovetails. Of course, that's not really a traditional way to do it. Tailsies have an argument too, but it's based on muscle memory. When you're cutting dovetails by hand, you have to keep the saw precisely aligned. When you're cutting the pins, you merely have to worry about keeping that blade perpendicular to the workpiece. As long as you don't tip it to the right or to the left, you're golden. But cutting the tails requires a compound angle, which is much more difficult to maintain. So, if you mess up the tails, it's not a problem as long as you cut the tails first. Any error will be compensated for when you mark it on the second board and match that cut. 
So the tailsy say, cut the much more difficult tails first, and then it'll be easier to line up the pins second. Okay, let's talk saws. A good dovetail saw should have a nice, stiff, heavy spine, fine teeth that are filed for a rip cut and almost no set. If you buy a cheap dovetail saw that doesn't have these fundamental features, you're going to have problems. That doesn't mean a little pole saw won't work, but the blade is pretty floppy and it can bend pretty easily. I've cut a lot of dovetails with these kind of saws, but generally when you get into thicker hardwoods, they can lead to a lot of frustration. But that doesn't mean you have to spend a fortune. A back saw or gent saw like this one made by Crown is the type of saw that's used by a lot of great woodworkers. I've even seen Charles Neal and Tommy McDonald using this type of saw. It has a thin, fine blade with almost no set, a reinforced brass back for extra weight, and a nice rosewood pull handle. Of course, gent saws do have their flaws. The brass spines still tend to be a little too light, and that pull handle can be a little uncomfortable when you're doing really hard woods. You can buy crown dovetail saws with a traditional western handle, but they also tend to be a little small for my hands. So like any good woodworker, we came up with our own solution. It's a hybrid dovetail saw. We made a handle that would fit my hand perfectly and fastened it to the toe of a crown back saw. This way we have the best of both worlds. We can use whichever style handle we want for whichever project we're doing, and having a handle on the opposite end adds weight to the spine of the saw and makes it cut much more comfortably. Having the handle on the other end also helps you to line up the saw just right when you first start making your cut. You're also going to need a fret saw. No, a fret saw is not the same as a coping saw. A fret saw uses scroll saw blades, so they're much finer. You can get in between those pins and tails and cut out the waste. When you're doing it, stay away from your line. You're just trying to get most of the waste out. You're going to use a chisel to get the rest. When you're hand cutting dovetails, I can't emphasize enough. Sharpen your chisels. Now, if only there was a video out there that showed how to quickly and easily sharpen chisels and plane irons using a work sharp and no sandpaper, where can I find that? Before you start pounding on that chisel, take some time to establish a nice crisp shoulder. This will keep your chisel from bouncing back across your line when you start banging on it with the hammer. This is especially important in hardwoods. When it does come time to start chopping away, start with the face side of the board, the one that's going to show in the final joint, and then chop only halfway through. This way you're not going to tear out into the side that everyone's going to see. Work your way slowly across the joint and take your time. Five minute dovetails are great for show, but when you're making a nice piece of furniture, you don't want to risk messing it up just because you want to do it fast. Whether you do the pins or the tails first, get them perfect, and then you can use it to transfer the marks onto your other board. Using a hand plane and a vise is a great way to keep things level and stationary while you transfer those marks. Here's where your cuts really make a difference. Stay close to the line, but on the waist side. You can always trim it up with a chisel to get it perfect. Don't get too close to the line. And as a final step, I like to chamfer the back edges of my tails. This way, it doesn't mush those corners when you tap the boards together. Remember, this is on the side you're not going to see. You want those joints to fit together with just a light tap of a mallet. If they're too tight, don't force it. You're going to split your material. I have to admit, I know Ian Crossman or Bob, Rob, Kirby, my dovetails don't come out perfect right off the saw. I make mistakes. But it's nice to know that most of those mistakes, even sometimes the really bad ones, can be repaired. The most common mistake is having some gaps in your dovetails. Don't worry about it. This can be fixed. Take a chisel and make that gap uniform and wide. Yes, you're going to make the gap worse, but then you're going to have room to put some glue in 
and a little wedge that you make out of the same material. Remember, use end grain to go on the end grain, long grain to go on the long grain. Tap it in, chisel and plane it smooth when it's dry, and you won't even be able to see that flaw. Some mistakes, though, are really bad. You know, the kind of ones that make you shout words like fiddle faddle and carn sarnet. You know how everybody says you should mark on the board what's your waist and what's your pins or tails? Oh, I'm smart. I don't need to do that. Yeah. Well, I ended up cutting off half my pins instead of the waist. Yeah. Big problem. Dig through the sawdust and find the pieces and then glue them back on because you're going to need them to line up the joint when you mark for your other board. Of course, they're probably going to come off when you chop out all that waste in between. So, eventually, you'll just have to find which one goes in which hole after the joint is assembled and glue them back in so you have a nice, cosmetically perfect joint. The Oscars of this week. I guess it's time to break out the old red carpet, eh? Let me ask you, do you really care who I'm wearing? If I was to prance up and down the sidewalk in front of your house, would you scream like a little girl and come out and ask who makes my signature denim shirts? If you really have to know, I think this stand here is made by Chef Boyardee. Why do we really care about these people? Isn't it enough of a reward that they get paid obscene amounts of money for the work that they do? Do they really have to have six or seven big galas every year just to pat themselves on the back and hand out some gold statues? And why do they think that we want to watch it? Well, I'm not going to be watching. I'm going to be right here this weekend in my workshop making things out of wood and putting it on film. And when the Academy calls me and says, Stumpy, you've just won the Oscar for the whatever we just made up. I'm going to tell them, no thanks. I'll just stay here where I am, sit back, have a cold one, because that's what I've earned, my friend. <laughs>